Hello, it's Sarah, and I have a project share today. I've been working yesterday. I know it was Super Bowl day and whatever, but <laughs> between watching the Super Bowl, I was making these wonky houses. I had mentioned that I was hoping to get my hubby to cut me some wood to make these houses, and so I did. Uh, the video is uh, wooden, wonky wooden houses. Let me double check. Um, wonky Wood Houses, and it's by Joggles.com. I'll put the information in the description box. I'm pretty sure she has the wood houses for sale, but if you have a handy husband, you can just, or if you're handy yourself, you can cut the wood yourself. So I made these little templates for him, and when I woke up the next day, woohoo, he had made me cut me two sets of these houses, and there were five. Um, but I already used the other one of this set. So I have them all and I want to share what I did. Um, I was, I know it was Super Bowl day, but I was busy making houses. I don't know if I said that because I just videoed this twice. Um, <laughs> so let me show you what I did. Um, I have still some mixed media on me. I did my nails again. But, oh my God, you guys, it was so fun. I think I'm just going to pan. So there's, I did a Zentangle one. And then this one's in, is by her, the one that, um, and I forget, I don't know her name, the Joggles.com lady. But um, I love them. I absolutely love them. I'm going to make more. Um, so let me take them one at a time and kind of show you what I did. Um, of course, I'm in, you know I'm into the Zentangle now, and this was the easiest one to do because I didn't paint this or anything. I took my super thick, this is called the Chisel Tip Permanent Marker. It's a super th uh, thick Sharpie, and all I did was go around the edges of the house on all the edges, and then I laid it down on some um, watercolor paper. I used the watercolor paper again. And just cut out the shapes and then I zentangle the house so it's a little bit wonky I mean it's definitely a wonky wooden house um, and I did the back just made a back window and I changed the roof on the back because it was just you know I did it quicker this is a little smaller pattern more intricate these um, letters are the Tim Holtz ideology alpha parts and I've never used them I think I got those at um Tuesday morning a long time ago so I bought nothing to make these this was just I just grabbed what I had and went for it so this this silver piece is some more Tim Holtz stuff she loves Tim Holtz stuff the um the joggles lady so she definitely used a lot of it um I just pulled what I had I mean she has a lot um newer stuff but I have a lot. I still have a lot. And the um, spare parts from um, Hobby Lobby. I had Prima that I used. Prima like those. Um, the, you'll see. Anyway, um, so this is what these are. And I think these are called the industrious stickers. But these are perfect for making the roofs. Like I have some left, but it wouldn't stick to here. But this is the little, this part. See it with the little flower? I love it. Um, and I just punched out a few hearts and stickled them and put them on either side. And this was just bling from my um, stash. I had these little black blings, so I put a black bling on there to just keep it black and white. Oh, but the other thing I did was, and I hadn't done this before, a lot of times um, when you watch the Zentangle videos, they also shade the piece. So if it's just a big tangle, you can separate out your different designs by shading it. So that was the first time I did that. And you use a stump. This is, I guess it's called a stump. I don't know, it's something stump. But I had these from before from um, a class I took. But I did the shading and I really like how it looks. It gives it dimension. And I did that on all my um, houses. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So that's the first one. And like I said, easiest one. No painting involved. Just glue your paper and Zentangle. So simple. But look, they stand up. You know, it's just, a. I think this was really good wood that he had. It was just a piece of pine. But look, there's like no knots in it or anything. And he sanded it. He really did a good job for me. All right, so that's my first one. Then this was the second one I did. And this is totally... Um, 
inspired by the Joggles uh, video. She used this um, tissue paper, the Tim Holtz Ideology tissue paper, and I've had this forever. I think this is the first one he came out with because I know he's got a couple designs out now. This one's called Melange and it's got the butterfly and the music and the writing and um, so I just uh, I used a gel I did it just how she did it on the video I used the soft gel mat which I have had and I mean this is from when I was trying all the mixed media I have all these supplies because I bought everything but I don't use it very often I tend to use um, my Podge but I did use the mat I wanted to do it kinda how she was teaching it so I just covered it with, oh, first I gessoed all the wood, every, except for this one. I didn't gesso this one. I, you didn't have to. I, like I said, this is magic marker. All this black that's showing is magic marker, but the rest of them I did gesso. Um, just, I have this gesso. Let me show you what I have. I like this gesso. It's the Liquitex Basics Acrylic Gesso. And um, let's see what thickness it is, because it says... It's kind of medium. It's f not fluid. It's in the middle. Because some gessos are thicker. And she actually spreads her gesso with a palette knife. So, um, I don't know what kind. She has like a lot of the um, Ranger products in her store, I think. Um, so, I just use what I had. And I mean, I like this one because I can squirt it out. I just squirt out how much I need. Um, but yeah, I gessoed everything. And then I did sand it afterwards too because it leaves a tooth I think she likes like when she spreads it with the um, palette knife to get the bumps and the ridges and then you know when she because then the next one she did is like a finger painting technique and I'll tell you about that but this one and then I just smooth the paper on top and make it stick real good and then you cut it I cut it with my um, exacto knife like right down along the edges and she gives you directions for all of this so um, it, really good video very 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 good even a beginner could totally do this this is a simple one because really all you need um, I mean I did use paint so then of course I got out my Tim Holtz paints and for this one because I wanted to keep it as simple as possible and these I think and I had them I haven't gotten any new colors in a while but I did get them and so I'm like I'm using them so they were really easy so I just took and would slash it along and put paint and then rub it in because that's how she did it she was like finger painting she would put the paint on her um, craft mat and then just rub it with her finger so I just played with it and this one I just kept I'm loving the um the distress markers I had from when I was doing my Zentangle tutorial but I just pulled a few of those <coughs> excuse me guys <coughs> And she goes through exactly what to do and she colors her um, because the gel medium makes it slippery this is gonna be a long video because I'm I'm so excited they were so fun and then she likes the fabric castell pens which I have a couple but I prefer the microns so I was using my Pigma microns to do the line work but I did a black line around the edges and then just some words the Tim Holtz words and then these were words that I stamped I think um, again, this is the, um, these arrows come from the, um, the sticker sheet. And this is, I love the Mementa. This was just a Mementa, um, dragonfly that I had. So that was it. I kept it kind of simple. Oh, there's a little piece of that, um, sticker sheet up here too. This one was really, really simple. Oh my God, you guys, I spattered. I don't know if you can see this, but I haven't spattered in years. Like we used to spatter our painted pieces. Um, certain artists definitely would spatter every piece they did like their their pieces had spatter all the time like kind of toward the end you would spatter I don't know if you know what spattering is but you probably do I'm gonna go away and come back and these are spattered with I used my Mar Martha Stewart pearl instead of just white which I was using the Tim Holtz white, which I could just go get a white, and then I used gesso sometimes if I wanted white. But I mean, I was I was a mess. I had oh man, it was great. And I had when I went upstairs, <laughs> I had spatter on my glasses. It was just like it was such a mess. But and I ended up putting my apron on because I was just making a mess. But it was so fun, and I love the way it looks. She spattered, so that's what made me think of it. But you can see the shine of the pearl paint. 
because I'm using my Inca Golds. Anyway, she uses her Inca Golds, but look at the spatter. You can see the black spatters too, I hope. But anyway, so I did that. That was so fun. And she uses a fan brush to spatter. Um, I tried that. I did both. But I actually have this um, spatter tool. And this is something I had for years. Let's see. It says something on it. This one's by Low Cornell. And it says number 91. I don't know what that means. But this is the spatter tool. And what, you do, what I do is I actually paint the color on. You water it down and get it, you know, get it messy. And then I like put it on the tips of the brush. Then you have a little more control because when you put this up into the brush, you can kind of see where it's going to flick. It's, it's a little more control. We've used toothbrushes and like I said, she used a fan brush, but I kind of played around with both. All right, this is my next one I did. Um, this one is all gelatos. I used my gelatos. I've had them forever. I did a little tutorial with them before and I've played with them with canvases. But I had the metallics and I've never used the metallics. So I pulled, I, well, they're a mess right now. But you can tell if it's metallic. It says it on there too. Oh, this one, see, this says metallic. But anyway, I pulled all the metallics, which I only have about five or six colors of metallics. And that's what this is done with. I'll show you the back. The back is definitely, oops definitely brighter. Oh, the first thing I did though was to stencil some mo modeling paste on. And this again, she did all this. She did this first. So I did it on, I'm pretty sure I did it on all of them except for the, um, the Tim Holtz ones, the ones I did with the tissue paper, but the rest of them all have, um, yeah, on the back. I didn't, I think I used the front on one of them. The one with stars. Oh, th this one. I did stars on the front, so there we go. Um, but anyway, so you do that first on top of the gesso. Well, that's how I did it because then she finger painted. So she had these, um, oh, what is her name? I'll think of it. She's the one who does um, art journaling with her sprays, and she works for Ranger, the very bright sprays. I, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> she had her paint. I guess she came out with a paint line and it's heavy bodied paint, she said. So all she was doing was finger painting. She put a little bit of the color out and just rubbed her fingers. That's why my fingers have still have color because I was rubbing. But I used the, the gelatos. So what I ended up doing was just putting a little bit on there and I took a wet wipe, a damp one, not a wet, wet one, and just kind of pulled the color so that it, because you can pull it right off. So you just want to be gentle. And I love it. Like, so you can see the metallic. It's very shiny. So I did that. And then this was the front. I decided to go with the star side. Um, and then I did shading. I did, um, uh, what was the other thing? Uh, the Inca Gold. So this is Inca Gold. And I got these on sale. These were on clearance at Michael's. My Michael's, I, I don't know if they're even selling them anymore. But when I saw them on clearance, that's what made me get the other colors. Because I think I probably just had gold. Um, but they have a lot of colors. Like, she sells them. And she had this peach color. She had really cool colors. Um, so if you're into mixed media, I, I love these metallic rubs. They're, like, so fun to play with. And you can use these on clay. Um, so many things. So, um... That's what she rubbed on top of the stars. And I ended up using actually rub and buff because I don't have silver in the Inca Gold. I had a silver rub and buff, but I wanted the stars to be silver. So I was kind of um, going with that. But I mean, this is rubbing everywhere. And I even rubbed on my little star. This is just a metal star, but to get it to match the piece and like all the metal pieces. This I painted with the pearl paint, the Martha Stewart pearl paint. These are just the Tim Holtz wings. And then I kind of rubbed it off when it was dry. And then I put the ink of gold. So there's like purple. This color is beautiful too. What is this? Burgundy. It's like a bronze. Oh, copper. Purple, copper, and maybe green or something. I don't know. I, I mean, and look, you can definitely see the spatter. You can see the spatter on the windows. And then I shaded. I did take... This is a wonderful technique. The, the pit pens are great because I had these. I had a pack of them. 
because you know I had to go get all the supplies when I was doing mixed media and I was so happy to pull these out again it was so awesome oh my gosh I had so much fun <laughs> I really did and I didn't stress over it like this is so cool so I obviously you can see the shading where I just like rub and then I, you just finger rub it because the metallic made it slippery like when you do mixed media usually you're adding mediums and gesso and a lot of stuff so you can so when it's a porous surface you have to kind of seal it but the metallics really helped and I even put a little in the corner this one's like one of my favorites I really really like this one and then I just kind of outlined the hearts in the background I mean you can still see them and then I also did the line work I did the line work around the edges of all of them so that's that one but again I um, spattered with the white with the Martha Stewart um, white, or this one might even be gesso because it was already shiny enough. I might have switched it up and went with the gesso. And I think this one, it's a tie, but I think this might be my favorite. I'm not sure, I don't know why, I just love it. I think it turned out so cool. I love the colors. Um, so I'm gonna take a sip of my water, I'm feeling. A guzzle. I did the same thing, like I said, but I, I have this cool stencil. This one is, um, I think it's Heidi Swap. There's so many stencils out there, and I really try not to buy a lot of them because I don't use them very often. But this one's an awesome one if you don't, I, mean, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see. You can't really see, but there's hearts, stars, and dots. So this is a really good one to have because you have right there, you have three different options. And I didn't even use the dots, but um, so that's what I did stars on the back of this one. And this one I did with paint, I think. I think I painted it. Yep, I'm pretty sure I painted it with my Tim Holtz paints. And I'm not positive, but I definitely used some blues. Oh gosh, I really don't know. <laughs> um, but all the shimmer like you can see a lot that's all Inca gold I have I used all the colors on here I mean you can see it on the windows I put per, um, gold purple there's definitely green on here and even the people I just I put some paint I probably started out with some paint I based them but then I just colored them with the Inca gold um, these are this little piece was the um, the silver stickers but I just used my gold leafing pen and made them gold because I put this piece of gold um, for the roof this was Mary sent me these thank you Mary see I'm slowly pulling out all those goodies you sent me um, and it's it just says family and then I put them and then that's it but I really I you know what this is gelato then I pulled this this color of gelato oh my god it's so pretty I I don't know if it's watermelon. It might be this metallic melon color, but I don't know. I that I had to I don't know. I had it out and so this one's just a mishmash. I can't even tell you what I did. I definitely spattered. You can see that. And I stamped. So I have this is kind of from my art dolls. I have this is a, my newest stamp and I love it. It's uh stampendous uh text. I don't know what it's called. Dream text. So there's definitions. Dream, love, celebrate, and wish, and hope. So I love that. Of course, they're very inspirational words, and they're not. I have a cursive writing. Gotta go. I have a cursive writing one, so I needed the print. So I used that, and because it was metallic, I wasn't sure. I used stays on ink. I wasn't sure how it would take but I like put this down on the floor <laughs> and then I put this on there and then I stepped on it to get it really down and then I just did the tip after that but it came out pretty good I'm pretty happy even even with the modeling paste on there it still showed up but I don't know why I just love the colors of this one gosh you guys sorry I'm like gaseous all right so that's that one and then this one might be the other tie that I really love and I was actually really going for a pink I wanted it to be pink and it just didn't stay pink <laughs> at all 
um, but I played with this one and pink and gray is what I was kind of doing um, but by the time you're done rubbing all and then I added green pink and green um, the green ink of gold on the side so then it got greener and I love pink and green I don't know but I really love how this one turned out I love it um, I don't know if it's because oh I want to talk about the doors and the windows um, all she does is take where's my thingy right here um, watercolor paper and whatever material you're using on your house she would put a little bit or um, co contrasting colors or com compatible colors on watercolor paper and just smudge it around like I have not I'm not big into backgrounds like you could totally just use pattern paper and the next set I do I think I am just going to use pattern paper and do it a little more collagey um, but this was just a cool I have the watercolor paper so I figured I would try it but yeah all these windows are watercolor paper and these I I stamped on the door I didn't stamp on the windows these are all just watercolor paper and these are a lot more similar color to the house so they kind of blend it in and that's why then I have my white pit pen and sometimes stuff would smudge and I would get very disappointed so um, that's a tricky thing and those of you who do mixed media probably could help I, I might need to seal things first but anyway the white pit pen was very help, helpful for like lightening things up and stuff like that like just to make them pop um, yes so I wanted to do that technique because that's that's what she did in her video so I wanted to try that but I mean you could obviously just use um, pattern paper and then it would be completely different um, but I wanted to do like out, draw everything on there the black lines um, so this one I stamped with this floral stamp this floral background stamp and this is a hero art stamp because um, I don't have very many big background stamps. I usually got them when I watched a video by um, one of the card makers out there that are awesome and do amazing things with these because um, there are a lot of techniques you can do with embossing and all different stuff. Um, but I pull the floral stamp because I usually just do the words. And because it was pink, I was like, but you really can't see very much of the stamp once I covered it all up with the colors so but it's there I mean it's just a background as you as you know you you do it's layers so um then what else I put just a lot of oh 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 I embossed the edges now this is done with my good old favorite stamp I love and I don't know where it is it's my um it, it just has affirmations it's out here but it's my desk it's not that messy actually my desk I cleared it up just can't see it um so I just stamped them you can still see them because there's a heart heart it says determination love hope faith there's like a Jesus fish on here a flower but anyway and I embossed that with ultra thick embossing UT so I did that and then after I painted it and then I just rubbed my Inca Golds on top of that so there's a lot of texture um, and then I, I kept coming back to with finger painting with the Martha Stewart I would use this as my white a lot of times everybody uses the gesso as their white to come back and um, calm things down but I always use the Martha Stewart so it, it has a lot of shimmer um, and then I had this was um I think a Prima piece it might have been Prima or I'm pretty sure it was Prima and I had these heart pearl brads and I popped it up this is a memento heart which I love and has been in my stash forever um, this is just a trim that I got at AC Moore um, but I was playing with the white I wanted to make this brighten because she would dull down all of her white stuff she's a more grungy Tim Holtz style um, the joggles lady so um, she would like put uh, alcohol inks on these and stuff to change the color but I just left the white to pop I used my um, perfect pearls my liquid pearls to just kind of I I didn't trust making a line so I made them dots but I love how that pops and then I wanted to bring the white down so I just put two flowers down there this is another um, 
Mementa and then a little um, bling. So yeah, on all my doors, I put a little, see that little tiny black bling? I love it. This one I put a little iridescent bling. All right, I have oh, one more. Um, and guys, I'm sorry, but I am, I'm so excited. These were so fun. So this is the other one that's like a tie for, I just, I think it's the color. Oh, see, that's another heart. <laughs> I'm trying to pick it off. There's a couple I didn't outline. I just love them. They're super cute. I don't know quite what I'm going to do with them. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then this is my last one. I just finished it this morning. I was exhausted last night. I stayed up so late. But this one's the most simple. But look at the back. Like, look at the coloring. So this is the, um, this, you guys should really, this one's the easiest one to try. And you get such a good result. The tissue wrap is what it is. Um, and I know a lot of you make your own tissue wrap. I mean, there's a million things you can do, but this was so easy to do because um, it's already collaged. And then basically you just color it with your um, distress markers and you can rub it because you apply it with the matte medium that kind of seeps through the paper and you can just rub it to blend it in. And I used my distress markers to, to shade it too. And I just had... My aunt is very ill, and we're probably going to lose her soon. She has recurring breast cancer, which is in her bones, and it's just really, it's gone so fast. And anyway, she's on my mind, and um, I just really love the Hope. I've been doing the Bottles of Hope, and so Hope was on my mind, and I just simply put Hope and rubbed all the colors on that, put an angel, um, and kept it really simple. So that's it. These are my houses. So what I was going to say is, um, oh, here it is. This is my little stamp. I used the music stamp on the edges for this one, the music stamp on the top, and the word stamp, oh, no, the other word stamp. But this is the one with all the affirmations. The other word stamp on the sides of these. I did, I did that on both of these, and I love that. And then, of course, spattered it, spattered the heck out of it, which I love, too. Oh, my God. I keep saying love, but these are so fun. So I was thinking, you know, you could probably I'm gonna turn this up a little. Um, just put them out on a shelf, obviously. I mean, they look adorable. I mean, look at that. <gasps> that is so cute. <laughs> um. But like you, I think you could probably mount them um, on some type of like plaque or something as a like little village. Let me put this one over. Oh jeez, I'm gonna lay them down. That might be easier. I think he needs to go in the middle. You know, you could just like mount them. I love them guys so I hope you enjoyed this check out the video joggles.com and give them a try I mean even if you don't have wood just cut out paper and play all right thanks for watching